Welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT version 12. This is Curse of Strahd. We're going to do some more building in this video. Um, but before we do building, uh, I want to draw your attention to, and it was pointed out to me by one of the viewers, so thank you. Can't remember who it was. Rubbish. Um, Curse of Strahd Reloaded. So essentially what somebody's done, or a group of people have done, is they've taken the original Curse of Strahd module and then they've made some modifications, some updates and things to it. Because the original model of Curse of, uh, module for Curse of Strahd is actually it's quite challenging to understand what the flow is. Um, and you have to put a lot of brain power into working what it, working out what should happen next, which is fine. And if you've been through it as a player, um, you've got a good feel for it. Or if you've run it more than once, you start to get a good feel for it. And it's been a quite a long time since I've done Curse of Strahd, but I, I know what's going to happen. I know the key themes and things. Um, but if you're doing it for the very first time, this might absolutely be a game changer for you it's well worth a look so it, it literally is www.stradreloaded.com uh, and it does not replace the original module so they've been quite clever here they haven't um they haven't said oh you only need this because that would be issues with copyright of effectively stealing the material and completely rewriting it no what they've done is you can see they've got the beginning of the campaign very much like the actual module itself they've got a session zero so they're talking about um, some advice on how you could put this together um, warning about some of the themes that might come up in curse of strad um, to warn your players about which is nice they've got a section on um, character creation and flaws um, bonds and things like that um, but they've also introduced some motivation stuff that they have weaved through themselves um, They've got the law and things in here and again they've updated it a bit to make some of it gel a bit better or at least in their opinion uh, i happen to agree with that <laughs> um, what i really like here is they talking about how to play strad and they've got these recommendations or the you know severus snape is a is somebody you could chat you could choose to channel to give this kind of impression of that character which is really nice it really helps you pin that person down to a, a type of personality so you don't get stuck with a stereotypical i don't know um dracula kind of style um so what it does into the mist this is uh, the first act of course right at the beginning uh, and they've got their whole bit of death house now i've not used their death house bit at all i've stuck my death house with the original but they've got an introduction from daggerford um, and they take you through the whole of the death house but it's not a replacement so it tells you for example the main hall it tells you that actually that's the bit it relates to in the proper module um and it only tells you the bits that they've changed so they've introduced some a couple of extra bits here um a ticking grandfather clock to put some urgency in but it doesn't replace the original module which is i, th I think is good uh, you know they're not they're not infringing on it um they've just updated it they've just changed some stuff this room is largely as described in den of wolves okay so basically use the real module or the, you know the original module i should say um, for those descriptions and things except you can add these bits on okay this is this is their flavor that they've added on or expanded on the original one uh, which is really really nice my death house is running as the death house absolutely fine so um welcome to barovia though um we got the old Svalich Road, and again, they've got some slight differences here. Now, my start is different from their start. It's also different from the original module start, or at least it's one of the variants of that. So it's not going to be the same. So a whole bunch of this um, I am not using at all. Um, but I am going to use their Barovia Village uh, updated version of it. So in the original module, if I, I can drag that over, I've got it here, of course. Uh, I'm not going to change pages and things like that because, again, copyright issues. Um, but this, the idea of this takes you through. And when you first arrive in the village, it's actually Mad Mary is the first thing the players kind of notice uh, and go off and investigate Mad Mary's house because they can hear her crying. So that's the first hook. In Reloaded, 
they've pretty much said, well, look, Mad Mary's still there. They can still run that encounter, but there's no reason. They've got this raven instead that actually is dragging them off to a different location, um, to the Blood of the Vine Tavern. So the character's first building within the village is in theory the blood of the vine tavern rather than mad mary's house fine whatever <laughs> and you never know what your players are going to do anyway they might just wander off and do all sorts of things but it's adding a lot more depth and flavor so this is this is what i'm going to do going forward um is reference this the challenge becomes you know um, we talk about this stuff is i need both of them <laughs> So I'm not going to merge both of them and rewrite them at all. But when I'm running it, I will need both of them open and available, probably just in um, just in my second window and have them both up. Nice um, big monitor over there so I can have both of those documents side by side because I'm going to need to reference both of them. If I was smart and more importantly, if I had the time, I would probably try and do a big copy and paste job and compile those together. Now, I could do that for myself. What I can't do is then share it with you guys because of copyright and stuff. So um, am I going to bother? I'm not going to bother. It's not going to add that much to me. Um, the game doesn't, this game doesn't go quick enough that it's going to leave me behind scrabbling because I know it well enough. Uh, prep is everything. All of you who DM out there, you know that prep is everything and it's not about having encounters planned for the next six weeks it's about knowing your motivations of your npcs it's about knowing the types of locations that they could go to and just being ready to pull something out of your hat to use the polite term um so yeah i've got a good understanding of what's supposed to happen in this village i don't care what's happening outside the village um, beyond the major threads I just need to be really aware of what's happening in this village so if they surprise me I can adapt to it I don't need to be scrabbling going oh hang on a minute let me find that chapter totally breaks the immersion and that is so important in Curse of Strahd is to keep that feeling going as best you can all right uh, so yeah that's what I'm going to do <laughs> so I'm going to merge the two now with that in mind if we hop over here uh, I did make a little start on um, on my next scene the very first thing I've done is I'm on my scenes here top right you can see of them I've nested some of my scenes into folders now so I've got my into the mist mysterious visitors the Svalich road to get them there then the death house is all packaged up together and I've tried to match these acts to go along with Strad reloaded um, so it's easy for me to see. I don't want a whole bunch of navigation bits up the top there. That's not helpful to me as the DM. And the players, I'm not going to show them anyway. They're always going to be able to see the study. Um, but then they're only going to see the location they're in. So uh, for Barovia itself, the, the landing page will always be on its own. For Barovia itself, all I've done, they leave the death house. And I've just got, they've already seen this image approaching here. Now, what I have done is just put a active tile on here. When we click this, uh, <laughs> when I click this, it's going to bring them up a map. I was trying to find a map of the village that wasn't gridded um, and wasn't all nice and bright and crispy clean. Because, like, I don't want it to be. I want it to be a bit more grubby. So I found this one that uh, it's just going to give them an idea of the layout. You know, there's the church, there's the graveyard, there's these couple of larger houses here, the inn, etc. Um, and I would have them actually coming into town here. Now, I think I'm planning to have the death house kind of just perhaps just off the map here. They haven't quite got to the village when they encounter that. Now, with that tile, when you've seen me do this before, so you can go back and look um, at some of the earlier Car Curse of Strahd ones if you're not sure. But what I've had is when I click on that map, it makes this available in the party journal for them to be able to observe. Now, because I've clicked it, I need to turn that off again. Um, so then the players can always call up this map. It's just a map. It doesn't give them locations. It doesn't give them any information. So once I've kind of read the description of the town and things, I can give them access to that. Uh, where am I going? Configure, I want to have... N players have none. There we go. This is where that mod about um, viewable... What's it called? I forget the names of these mods. It's terrible, isn't it? Uh, da -da 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 -da. What was it called? Ownership Viewer, that one. So we're using that Ownership Viewer 
Um, so it's really easy for me to make sure that players can't see any of these things until I want them to. Um, really, really nice little useful mod when you've got a lot of resources going on and you're hiding stuff. But I want that player journal, just as, as I've said before, as they go through it, it will just continue to build as this resource of information for them, maps and letters and images and clues and things like that. Um, but obviously they don't want to start with that. Okay, so that's this first scene. Uh, just as they approach, and I'm going to be reading that, and I'm going to be talking about the fact that in the Ravenloft, sorry, in the Strahd Reloaded, they're talking about a crow, uh, sorry, a raven, <laughs> get it right, uh, a raven that calls to them and calls them uh, effectively, takes them through the village, should they choose to follow it. Hopefully they will, but they might not. Um, and it will take them to the Blood of the Vine Tavern. So I haven't got that scene yet. So let's uh, let's create our new scene then for Blood of the Vine Tavern. Uh, well, I'm going to put it in this folder. Absolutely. Whoops, a daisy. Uh, and I want to let's activate it. It's got nothing on here. Let's configure that, and I don't want it showing up in navigation. It just drives me nuts having too many things at the top. I know. <laughs> it's just me. Uh, but I do want to go and find my background image. Uh, right, I want to be in my maps in my uh, Curse of Strahd. I need to upload my new maps. Now, I've been hunting and finding maps that I want to use. Um, so I have downloaded a whole bunch here. Um, We've looked at these maps before and I've just forgotten. I've gone blank. Who the heck were they? It'll come back to me in a moment. Um, right, so I've got all these maps. Of course, what I want is the Blood of the Vine Tavern. Uh, and we've got our various ones here. I just want this ground floor. Okay. Um, that one. Okay, so that's my background image we're going to have. Let's call that in. Here it is. Uh, and one of the things I like about these maps is they are not all bright and shiny. They're a little bit dimmer, which is fits the theme, and they're gridless. Right, I'm going to have to check who that was. Give me one second. Okay, of course, Anabar. <laughs> I've looked at a few. They came from Anabar. So Anabar's complete Curse of Strahd map pack. Now, they are... A little bit old December 2021 um, there was a bit of an update there and some of them are over on um, uh, the uh, FA battle maps uh, but I'm just pulling them from here they're really nice I like them so apologies for that little interruption while I was trying to remember who the where the heck I got it I look at so many different places for resources and I sometimes I've obviously I forget where I get stuff from all right so here we go uh, now what i find quite useful here is to oops what am i doing is i do need to have a grid on because i am going to have tokens so actually saying that uh let's let's drag this character out uh, a couple of characters here it's, good, it's just going to help me set my grid because look how small right first of all <laughs> Let's put on the lighting. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, right, and I want to set this grid. Now, they're about half the size, aren't they? So if I make the grid size... Oh, am I going the uh, the correct way there? 200? There we go. That makes that token much more appropriate size. Yes, they are turning, but I will turn that off for all the players for every scene. Um, there we go. Lovely jubbly. They can now move around, um, and that fits about right. We can go to the tables, we can be at the bar, etc. All right, so nice and easy. Grid all done. Uh, right, what else do I need to do? Lighting, 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 lighting. Now, am I going to want to have weather effects on here? Should we always have some basic weather? I don't think in the town I'm worried about that at this point. I can always come back and put fog on if I want to. Um, but I will create a region. Um for this. I'm going to create it in several chunks of course. Because I do want to make sure that generally speaking indoor places are a little bit darker than outdoor places. It just makes sense, right? Okay. 
So we've got our region here. And then we can go in, we've got our shapes. Yep, we've got a whole bunch of them put on there, but it doesn't matter, it's all part of the same region. And the behavior, behavior here is about adjusting the darkness level and we just want to bring it down a bit. So it's always going to be slightly darker inside. Simple as that. Um, we're going to darken it compared to the outside. Um, and what I will do, just in case I do put fog on later or anything, is I'm going to uh, suppress weather. There we go. Lovely jubbly. Job done. So now we come off. We should find it. Yeah, it doesn't look darker, does it? Let's make sure we got the, the lights up. I'm not sure if it's just me, but I seem to have a bit of an issue getting this adjustment of the darkness right. Now if we put it up to 0.8, I mean that should be significantly dark. Oh, I haven't got any walls on. That shouldn't make any difference because it's the scene area. Not quite working the way I expect. Uh, override. Oh, wait, hang on a minute. Yeah, no, that's not quite working the way. I'll have to fiddle that offline because you don't want to just sit here ages while I fiddle with that. Um, now, I've got global lighting on, so maybe that's it's to do with the global lighting. Um, so I've said, oh, everything's bright light. Uh, that might be what it is. Um, so don't worry, I will fix that. But of course, I need, do need to put the walls on here and things as well. But you might have noticed when I was bringing that in, we do have some tiles here. So I do need to go to my levels. I do need to uh, add levels, edit them. So this is the ground floor. Okay, good. Uh, this is, oh, did it have first floor as well? I think it only had roofs. I think it only had roofs. Hang on a second. Let me check my uh, little graphics there. So yeah, it has first floor. And then it has roofs. Okay, so we do want first floor. Fine. So we're going to have first floor. Okay, good. Um, oh, I haven't put the... Uh, so that is 0 to 10. And this is going to be 10 to 20. Oops. Oh, you can't see that. It's very tiny up there in that corner, isn't it? Make that a little bit bigger for you. Okay, so ground is 0 to 10. First floor is 10 to 20. Uh, lovely jubbly. Um, that's the ground floor where the characters are. This is the first floor and first floor we want to insert a new tile. So let's go to here to our tile browser. Thank you very much. A little bit slow. <laughs> Been a bit slow today. Uh, let's choose our file and we want this one here. Oop, drag that in. We can close that. And of course, this has got to sit perfectly over there, which is lovely. All right. Uh, and now, of course, we can actually just go to our roofs view. Uh, and again, choose file. And we want uh, uh, just this one. Oh, I didn't drop it. Go on, drop it. There we go. <laughs> Bit challenged today. All right, so just make sure that drops perfectly over the top. Okay, so turn the roof off. We can see that. We can go down to the ground floor. We can see that. So hopefully that's all sorted and working exactly how we want it to. That will be great. Uh, so let's pop back to our characters. Uh, so the characters are outside but they can walk under that roof and it will appear. Hmm, that's not how I want it to be. I want them to be able, when they're in here, they want to be able to see everything. So I'm going to fiddle with that roof and sort that out. But uh, first floor, so we're going to have some stairs and things here as well. So really all I need to do, the well, next what I'm going to do, again, you've seen me do it hundreds of times, not going to do it again for you, um, but I'm going to just stick in the walls off, site, off screen, uh, have a little play around with the roof, just make sure that that's working the way I want because when they're inside I want that hidden rather than just oh I think I know why as well 
I think I know why. But anyway, in the next video, I will show you my updates to this particular area with the walls in, with the roof working, put some lights in and bits like that. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye bye.